So the question is, if you're going to buy an ultra-wide 144Hz gaming monitor, which new RTX 30 series should you buy? A 3070, a 3080, or a 3090? Actually, this particular question, the gentleman already says a 3090 is out of the picture, and it should be. Frankly, a 3090 is not a reasonable purchase for most people. $1,500, it is not a good value. Its CUDA core performance is not sufficient over a 3080 to justify it. It's just the 24 gigs of VRAM you're paying for, and you're not going to need that for gaming for a while to come unless you are an extreme corner case for modding. So we'll take the 3090, and we'll just shove that aside to sort of the interesting crowd, shall we say. As far as the 3070 and the 3080 goes, I am firmly of the opinion that at launch, right now at U.S. launch prices, now prices vary around the world, but... At U.S. launch prices, the 3080 is the deal. Not only does it have 10 gigs of VRAM instead of 8, not only is it GDDR6X, which is 50% faster than uh, the GDDR6 on the 3070, there's like 26, 2700 more CUDA cores. Mm -hmm. If you divide the number of CUDA cores in, the 30 se in a 3070 by $500, which is the U.S. launch price, and then you divide the... 8700 whatever it is CUDA cores in a RTX 3080 by the $700 launch US price. The 3080 is a lower cost per CUDA core than the 3070. You're actually getting more CUDA cores per dollar spent on the higher end card. That like never happens. No. That's amazing. And it's faster and it's got more VRAM and it's faster VRAM. And they're both already premium. We're not talking about the difference between like a 200 and a 400 R card here. If that were the case, that'd be different because it'd yes. be double the price. Correct. But we're talking about 500 and 700. So if you're planning on buying a card for an ultra wide monitor, a 144 hertz monitor, if you're planning on a premium build, uh, spend the extra 200 bucks to buy a 3080 by all means. Not that everybody needs those things, but if you're going 1440p ultra wide 144 hertz, don't play games. Don't save 200 bucks. You, you've got a premium high-end machine, buy a premium high-end card, and be happy. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a true statement that in the very near future, we're likely to see Supers and TIs with more VRAM. 16 and 20 gigs of VRAM is coming. Yep. If you could wait, you know, at 1440p ultra-wide, 144 hertz, you might want more VRAM in the long run. But of course, if they take three or six months to come out, if you're itching to buy today, this particular gentleman asking the question has a Vega 56 right now. A Vega 56 is not going to cut it for 1440p ultra wide going forward. I mean, it'll do some games today, but that's it's, it's getting on the thin side, shall we say. The other issue I have is this gentleman has a Ryzen 5 3600. 3600. <laughs> Uh, you need a CPU upgrade. Yes. I'm sorry to say, but if you're buying an RTX 30 series at launch and you're spending $700, you need a Zen 3 upgrade. When those launch in October, late October, early November, I would be looking at a Ryzen 7 4700X. Maybe we'll have to see what the charts and the benchmarks and the numbers look like because there's room over 10 core chip, but we may want to even consider a Ryzen 9 4900X. A Ryzen 5 3600 going forward from this point with a $700 Ampere card. No bueno. Yes, it'll do it. Yes, it'll run. Yes, it'll be fine. Mostly today's games. Sure, it's not terrible. What you are describing is not a mid-level computer. And a 3600 is a mid-level chip. It's a great chip. I mean, if you're building a 1080p 60 hertz machine, oh my goodness, a Ryzen 5 3600 is epic. That's what I've got. I love it. But... 144 hertz ultra wide with a 3080? No. No, no. no. Where that's 3060. Wrong. No bueno. So that's 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 the answer to that one. There we go. All right.